let's begin. At Santo, our treasurer has provided a gavel, so I'll call this meeting to order. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'm Dan Curtis, and I'm the president of the uh, History of Pathology Society for this year, and I'd like to welcome you to Historical Site of Pathology. Today, we're um, uh, very pleased and thrilled to have uh, four uh, speakers, uh, Nicholas Chancy Antonio, uh, myself, Dr. Ritu Nayar, and Rachel Gordeski to talk on um, uh, subjects that I'll show you shortly. Uh, Dr. Chancy Antonio will be talking on the life of Dr. Papa Nicolau. I'll be talking on Hashime Moriyama, Dr. Papa Nicolau's artist. Uh, Dr. Nayar will be talking about the Bethesda system, its creation and maturation. And Dr. Gordotsky will talk about cytopathology, why it took so long to arrive. Um, we have no conflicts of interest. And you've seen this about CME. Uh, this is the History of Pathology website. I encourage you to visit hps.wisc.edu. Um, and uh, if you're so inclined, uh, you can see the archives and uh, the membership. Today, I'd like to hand this over to Dr. Santo Nicosia, our treasurer, and he will present the first Henry Azar Award. Thank you, Dan, and welcome to everybody. So this award, we thought we'll develop this award in honor of Dr. Henry Azar. And the idea came last year, and the, the extended committee of the society agreed. So a few words about Henry Azar. Let's see how many of these two is here. I need to move. I met Dr. Azar in 1984, when I moved from Penn to South Florida. And uh, in the ensuing year, I realized how great the pathology is, but also a great Renaissance pathology was. He was, uh, he obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Aleppo, Syria, Doctor of Medicine in Beirut, American University. And then he came to the States. He was an intern in the, a New York hospital. He served in the US Army and Navy before becoming an American citizen. He held this consecutive professorship at Columbia, Kansas, and then South Florida, where I met him. He was chief of laboratory at the local VA hospital for about 20 years or so. But most important, he's a founding member of the History of Pathology Society in 1996, when, as you can see, Perhaps you cannot see very well in, in the photograph below. He met with a number of people, including a very young Nicosia in the middle, 1996. Dr. Nezelov was there, Dr. Leo Koss was there, uh, Dr. Ishmael Akam was there. Uh, let's see, who also was there? Uh, Flor Flora Bell Mulek was there, Anna Marie Nelson was there, so many other, so many other people, uh, distinguished people, uh, pathologists in those days uh, for many, many years to come, of course. Uh, but the remarkable thing about this man is that uh, in 1994, I believe, when he retired from pathology at the University of South Florida, he entered a PhD study at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And at the, at the age of 71, he obtained his PhD, I'm told the oldest PhD graduate of that university. He wrote a beautiful um, uh, book, it's published on the history of uh, Medicine in Spain and Southern New York, very nice book. So before finishing, before giving the awards, I'd like to say a few words that were sent to me by the sons of Dr. Azar, uh, Henry Azar, Henry uh, Jr. and Philip. They wrote to me, as uh, Henry Azar's sons, we grew up in, in awe of our father, dedication to medicine. He went to work not just on Monday through Friday, but also every Saturday of his career, and he would also be working on Sunday uh, if his wife had allowed us to do so. Uh, we also knew him as a voracious reader of history. We can recall, for example, his reading of old Winston Churchill for volume Our Father uh, and other, uh, many other books. Uh, that combines two passions for uh, history of medicine and research for many years until he uh, decided to obtain a PhD in medicine upon his retirement. Uh, these two passions were accompanying for the rest of his life, and uh, we are very proud of him. We very much appreciate your honoring him with an award named after him, and uh, an area that merges interest in medical and historical scholarship. You will be very pleased and proud as well. 
Thank you very much. With that fail, thanks, Ariel, Julia, and Philippe Azzaro. So uh, it's important we keep this award. It's important we people in the audience advertise this award with your department, the other people in the, in the, in the discipline. Uh, will be, hopefully, we'll give it a year. And uh, let me tell you about a few things about the recipient of this award this year. Uh, Dr. Irina McKinney here in the audience, she's here, uh, and uh, Dr. Alessa Higgins. Uh, Dr. Alessa Higgins, a dermatopathology fellowship, it will not be here because she's working very hard in Alabama, but Dr. Irina Melba McKinney is ready and she will present a, a short presentation in a, in a few minutes. So, uh, how do we, uh, what are the criteria for this award? Basically, the uh, resident or Chinese uh, can uh, submit an abstract every year. It will be uh, scrutinized, it will be uh, reviewed, and then accept or not. The area that, to, to, that will be considered are scientific discovery in the area of pathology and medicine, epidemiology, discipline of pathology development, public health issue, contribution to major academic institutions in the area of history of pathology development, and all the events stretching back to antiquity. Uh, and as I would say also, we'll add also uh, contribute to the society in the area of social media. And this is an area where Dr. McKinney and Dr. Higgins uh, have very much contributed over the last year, correct? So without further ado, I would like to give the awards to the person present this year, uh, today, uh, Dr. Irina Melba McKinney. Please speak up to the podium. It's a very big and very heavy part, but uh, very much necessary. It reads, History of Pathology Society, dedicated to the study of pathological sciences and to people and events in widening the sphere of medical knowledge. Areas are award for advancement in the study of the history of pathology presented to Irina McKinney, Melba McKinney, and me. Congratulations. It also comes with a short contribution and the, the, mail, the check is in the mail, okay, as usual. So thank you so much for the award. Thank you to Dr. Curtis and Dr. Nicosia and Dr. Aubrey who couldn't be here today. Um, so we're part of the history of pathology and we've been creating Twitter content for the um, society's Twitter page or Twitter presence and the history of pathology. Society is dedicated to the study of the pathologic sciences and to the people and events who widen the sphere of medical knowledge. Um, in the top right is Dr. Higgins. She couldn't be here today, but she's a current fellow at the University of Alabama in dermatopathology. So we joined the society and decided to do the Twitter content because we believe that social media is beneficial to bringing pathology topics to a broader audience. Um, for me personally, history has always been a big interest of mine and pathology certainly has a large amount of it. And Alyssa would like to share that she's always had a fascination with history and how it consciously or unconsciously has effects on what we do today. And this project has allowed her the opportunity to more formally investigate these influences. Um, she enjoys sharing this sometimes obscure knowledge with a broader audience and sincerely enjoys doing it. So in regards to the origin of ideas that we decide to make um, posts of, we've looked at eponyms of diseases and pathologic bodies, as well as historical references. Um, we've also asked for faculty suggestions. So if anybody ever has an idea, they're welcome to share. Um, We've perused lists of pathologists, as well as engaged in curiosity and brainstorming using similar Twitter accounts as a springboard for a deeper dive. Uh, one resource that we've used a lot is PubMed. Um, two keywords that we've used in searching is history and pathology, of course. Um, two examples of content that we found on PubMed include an article about Abigail Adam, Adams, um, daughter of John Adams, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, as well as a mummy that was found to have alpha-1 um, antitryptase deficiency. One of the main challenges that we've had in creating Twitter content is copyright. 
In general, the copyright law of the United States is contained in Title 17 of the U.S. Code, and copyright in works subsists from its creation and endures for a term consisting of the life of the author and 70 years after the author's death. But fortunately, there are things like Wikimedia Commons, which we have used so we could find images that are not restricted by copyright. Um, some of the similar accounts that we followed for ideas include past medical history, the Maude Abbott Medical Museum, the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia, as well as my, one of my personal favorites, um, Dr. Dravis Brown in Australia. And in this um, Twitter feed, he talks about how Kuru, which was um, a neurodegenerative de disease in Papua New Guinea, was found to be a prion disease due to microscopic similarity to scrapie and sheep. One of the things that we've looked at to see how many people we're reaching is um, Twitter analytics, which Dr. Aubrey graciously gave to us. Um, in January, we had 10.8 thousand tweet impressions or views and 55 new followers. And in February, we had 11,000 impressions and 39 new followers. And at the bottom, you can see a couple of our top followers. Um, on the bottom left is Christina Arnold from the University of Colorado's Pathology Faculty Department. And to the right, there is Aisuke Enoki, um, who's from Kobe, Japan. Um, as far as tweet impressions or views, um, the number has ranged from 1,700 to 26,000 per month. We've noticed that historical figures, such as Ruth Margaret Easterling, one of the first black uh, pathologists, and Rudolf Virchow have generated more interest than pathologic entities themselves. And as followers have increased, impressions have increased. Um, we have followers from every continent besides Antarctica, and um, pathologists as well as physicians and other medical specialties, as well as academic medical departments and other medical societies. So in conclusion, social media is nearly ubiquitous and can be a very effective way for professionals to discuss information and interact with colleagues. And Twitter can provide an educational value to pathology networking and the broader medical community. And plus, it's fun. We've, very, we've enjoyed doing this very much. Um, it has allowed us to explore very interesting and niche and unusual topics. And we're delighted to help to provide this social media content for the Hist History of Pathology Society. Um, I personally found that this project was very fun because it has allowed me to discover other individuals with similar interests. And Alyssa would like to share that she has been very fortunate to be able to share her interests with a broader audience while learning new and interesting things from her own research and from other Twitter users. And I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. And I suppose we'll have our next speaker. So thank you so much.